Chris. Hi, I'm Chris. Uh, my presentation's on Webpack, so fitting that, let's use the power of Webpack to build the presentation. All right, nice. We're all built. This is close enough. All right, so what is Webpack? Um, basically, it's a module bundler which can do similar stuff for you to Grunt, Gulp, Browserify, et cetera. But how it works is following dependencies, as you can see in this image over here. And it outputs just one JS file, well, in this case two, but static files that contain all of the dependencies. How does this work? There's three parts. The compiler, the resolver, and the parser. So let's start with the compiler. The compiler takes an entry script, so you just give it one origin script, and it's going to follow all the dependencies that that script has, and all the dependencies those dependencies have, et cetera, and outputs one file. So an example, we have here main.js, where we're requiring a file which is in the same folder called ident. And that ident is going to return a function that just you know, is the identity function as you can see. So if we were to webpack with our start script main.js and output bundle.js, here's how that would look. Whole bunch of junk, some more, and here we go, the actual modules that you got. So it's kind of resolved the require statement to this webpack require, and it's packaged this into module zero and module one. How did it do that? In comes the resolver. So just like it sounds, it reads require statements and attempts to resolve them to absolute file paths. So you could, for instance, you've all required a node module without a relative path. You can require stuff with a relative path or with Webpack, you could say, look in some directory. And if it has a unique name, it can find it without an absolute path. All right. Resolver is pretty simple. Uh, the parser is where it gets a little interesting. So it uses a JavaScript library called Esprima to read through scripts and create an abstract syntax tree. And it's then going to use that in combination with the other two parts to find the files and compile them. So this is how our main JS looks to Esprima and to Webpack. So it's identified it as a program and the important part is here, we have this call expression, which is a require, and it's got this argument, which has been resolved to dot slash ident, and that's what gets passed to the resolver to resolve to an absolute file path. So the total way that it works is resolve the absolute path to our main script, read that and create that same syntax tree, identify in that syntax tree that we have this dependency, find that absolute path using the resolver, read that file, create another abstract, abstract, abstract syntax tree, sorry, and we have found in our ident that there's no more requires and therefore we are done. Now that we've identified all that, we go back to the compiler that require, as we saw, has been replaced with a webpack underscore require one. So as I explained earlier, all the modules are just numbered, you know, zero, et cetera, on. So ident was the second module, and we just require it as such. The bundle ends up, all that kind of junk text we saw before is actually an immediately invoked function, which takes all those modules as arguments and it starts just by the end part that's invoked is webpack requires zero and zero requires one and so on. And how this works out in practice is webpack can determine, let's say you have a bunch of scripts that require lodash, it will find out where's the first time you need lodash and make sure that the lodash module comes before the first time you requested it and only inserts it once so there's no redundant scripts. That's pretty much it. Thanks for listening. <laughs>